Now we are going to talk about uh, a specific type of electrochemical cell called galvanic cell. This is still our old example of copper and the zinc metal inserted into electrolyte uh, solution that contains zinc chloride and copper chloride. Sometimes, as we said earlier, there may be a ionic permeable membrane that separates the zinc section from the copper section. Okay, and if there's no external applied power source, if there's no external applied power source, and the external resistance is finite, finite means it's not open circuit condition uh, means the resistance is small not too high not infinity under such condition the overall chem electrochemical reaction for this electrochemical cell would proceed in a spontaneous way spontaneous just means in a natural way in a natural way means just like a water flow from higher altitude to lower altitude just like uh, heat uh, conducts from high temperature region to low temperature region so for electrochemical cell the spontaneous reaction happens if the external resistance is finite and there's no external power source applied between the two electrode under this condition electron would flow from the anode while the oxidation half cell reaction occurs in this case from the zinc electrode where zinc gives out the electron to become zinc ion and are dissolved into the solution the release electron the electron would flow through the external circuit flow out from the zinc electrode where oxidation or anodic half cell reaction happens through the external circuit into the cathode where the cathodic reaction or the reduction half cell reaction would occur okay this is so-called spontaneous process without external power source and when the external circuit resistance is finite under this condition the electrochemical cell would be called a galvanic cell galvanic cell it's a natural um, conversion natural process in such a galvanic cell the chemical energy stored would be converted to electrical work whether it's electric electron passing through an external resistor to heat it up or light up a light bulb but anyway the conversion from the stored chemical energy converts to electrical work and such a electrochemical cell is galvanic cell and uh, these galvanic cells are typically encountered during the discharge of a battery discharge of a battery which means you use a alkaline battery on uh, discharge and use your lithium ion battery to power your uh, laptop or cell phone this is the so-called discharge process it is also encountered in a fuel cell when you consume uh, chemical fuels such as hydrogen to produce electricity these types of electrochemical cells are called galvanic cell it is accompanied by the conversion from chemical energy to electrical work and if we know i representing current flows through the cell based on ohm's law which relates voltage and the current and the resistance as well as the addition of potential through an um, electrical circuit we would have the following relationship e eq which means the equilibrium potential 
between the two electrode. You get that equilibrium potential when the it is open circuit and when three additional assumptions are met. We just said earlier, reversible electrode reaction, no internal shorting, and the one electrode reaction on each of the electrode. Under that condition, we would get uh, uh, equilibrium potential. Okay, and that equilibrium potential would be equal to current times the summation of internal resistance, which means whatever the resistance between the two electrodes within this electrochemical cell, plus the external resistance, which means the external circuit resistance could be the resistance for the light bulb plus all the lead wire. So this is the relationship that we are going to get for a galvanic cell. The equilibrium cell potential would be equal to the current times the total circuit resistance, which consists of two parts. One part, R I N T, represents the internal electrochemical cell resistance. Okay, for a battery, that is just the internal battery resistance. Plus R E X T represents the external resistance. As we said, it could be the lead wire resistance plus the electrode load resistance, such as for a light bulb. Okay, this is the relationship that we are going to get. And the way we have explained, R I N T is for cell internal resistance. For battery, that means battery internal resistance. R E X T is external circuit resistance. And and the, the cell external potential, which is the potential that you are going to measure between the two electrodes if the external resistance is finite, which means it's not infinity, then the external voltage would be current times external resistance. It's just current times this external resistance. And based on the equation above, it will be equilibrium cell potential minus current times cell internal resistance. Okay, so this is kind of the concept that you learned in physics and we refresh our mind in the context of our electrochemical cell. Again, the equilibrium cell voltage would be current times the total resistance, circuit resistance, which consists of internal resistance plus external resistance. And then when the external resistance is not infinity, then the external cell potential or external circuit potential would be current times external resistance, and it would be equal to equilibrium potential minus current times internal resistance, or the potential drop in due to the internal resistance.